Good, e good evening, it's Kerry here again with a new video. And this time I'm doing it at night. It's, uh, let me see, 7.13pm on Monday night, the 26th of July, 2021. Uh, as promised in my previous video, which I put out a couple of days ago, I am going to do a mystery box opening. Um, the mystery box in question arrived on my doorstep this afternoon and it was waiting for me when I got home. So it's been hauled inside and it's right here next to me ready to be opened. And let me just lift it up for you. There we go. Book grocer and it's mystery box H-I-B-Z-1. And anyway... So the book grocer, who are they? Well, they're an Australian book, online book retailer that opened around 20 years ago in Australia. Um, I think they're pretty successful. And they went into a sideline of offering these boxes full of remainder books, themed boxes, changing now and then, um, you like things like crime and thrillers or science fiction and fantasy or science and technology, biographies, and so on. And these themed boxes have become very successful for them. And... As part of that business, they also sell mystery boxes. And uh, fast forward to 2021, they've just opened a, a service he here in New Zealand. So now we can get in on the, the box action. Um, I assume that they send the boxes over in bulk from Australia and then they distribute them around New Zealand by local couriers. And it works out uh, a bit more cost effective than trying to get a box from Australia, which I imagine the postage would be uh, murderous and um, so the loc the uh, URLs if you're interested so that uh, the Australian site is bookgrocer.com.au but they also uh, have the bookgrocer.com URL as well and in New Zealand it's bookgrocer.co.nz now the, most of the boxes uh, cost around a hundred dollars for a box and the uh, themed ones have something like between 12, 18 to 20 type number of books in them. The mystery boxes, however, have uh, apparently 30 books for $100 New Zealand. $10 shipping, so it works out something like between $3 and $4 per book. Um, of course, you know, have no idea what's in your mystery box, so that's what we're about to find out. Now, if I just find my handy knife, we'll... Uh, Get on with the show. There we go. Box cutter. Let's cut the tape. I'm sure this is thrilling. I'm doing this off camera for you. Okay, lid is open. So let's see what have we got. I can see some hardcover books and we have a lot of packing material. So here we go. Book number one. Man vs. Life, Strategic Approach to Man Stress. Warning, this is not a self-help book, not even close. There we go. Some type of self-help book, despite what it says. Lots of colourful diagrams and bullet points. So that's book number one out of the way. Next up, this is sealed in plastic. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what it is. It looks like some type of journal and uh, lined blank pages of a journal, some type of uh, stationery set. It's from New Holland Publishers and it says stationery on it. And it's got an ISBN number, so maybe there is something printed inside there. Okay, that's number two. Number three. Something called Zoe Sug, Cordially Invited. Uh, what have we got here? Inspiration for all occasions, big and small across the whole year and woven through with my own stories and memories. This book is a celebration of people getting together and doing a little bit extra. Uh, some type of recipe book come party organising some sort of thing like that. Um, I don't recognise the author at all, of course, so there's lots of nice food photos in it. There we go. Now here's a little one. I am grateful. All the good times I want to thank you for. You are beat true to form, my top banana, the one I turn, up, I turn up to when I need a friend. And I want to say thank you for all you do, all you are. So here's a little book full of big love for you. Some type of gift book. It's like a pun on every page. It looks like something, lots of stuff to do with food. Simple layout. It's just another 
little interesting thing there. Right, let's go. Oh, here we go. Another cookbook. James Wong's 10 a day, the easy way. Fuss free recipes and simple science transform your health. From the Sunday Times bestselling author of How to Eat Better. There we go, James Wong. I think he's vaguely familiar from some something on television. More recipes, photos of food, the usual. Okay, next up, another hardcover. Kiwi Dogs and Their People by David Darcy. There we go. So it's come all the way full circles from, from around the Tasman, I mean across the Tasman and back again. So it's a lot of photos of, looks like rural people, rural New Zealanders and their uh, farm dogs and a little bit of text about them. So your mileage may vary, but that doesn't really interest me too much. Uh, okay, next up, something that's ring bound. Uh, Mandela mazes. Interesting. A whole lot of mazes that you can scribble on, I assume, all in kind of circular mandala shapes. Um, probably keep someone occupied for hours, maybe not me. Um, what have we got here? Bring Back the King, The New Science of De-Extinction by Helen Pilcher. Now, I've seen this one uh, as part of their science box, um, so it's interesting. It's about, let me see, what if you could bring back just one animal from the past, what would you choose? It could be anything, anyone from history, from the king of the dinosaurs, T-Rex, to the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, and beyond. De-Extinction, the ability to bring extinct species back to life is fast becoming a reality. There we go. Looks interesting. That's quite wordy. He's got some interesting diagrams in there. So that's probably one I might actually read. Next up. Respect. The Life of Aretha Franklin. Biography, latter-day biography, obviously. Um, looks like it's got a lot of good reviews on it. Who's it by, actually? David Ritz. I know there's a movie of the same name. Uh, not sure if it's connected. There we go. May read that, may not. What have we got here? Nailed it. Will real love survive reality TV? Looks like a novel, romantic comedy type thing. Who's it by? Mel Campbell and Anthony Morris. Um, it's a contemporary rom-com that hilariously and lovingly exposes the unreality of reality TV down to earth every woman protagonist. Maybe something undemanding if, if I'm feeling like it. All right, there we go. What's next? Looks like a thriller just from the cover. Linwood Barclay, the number one bestseller. And the doors close, he's got you. An elevator pitch. Presses all the right buttons, it sees. Begins uh, on Monday when four people board an elevator in Manhattan. Each presses a button for their floor, but the elevator climbs non-stop to the top and pauses for a few seconds before dropping. Right to the bottom of the shaft. Okay, Thriller obviously is very airport novel design cover. Uh, may or may not read that either. What else have we got? Yak on Track. Unforgettable adventure in the last Himalayan kingdom. Interesting travel book. It's photos. Uh, used to be a sucker for this type of things, uh, especially more dangerous places, war zones are one heavy, but this may be just as interesting. There we go. Oh, and here's one that I actually was interested in at one time. I've almost bought. Cold Storage by David Kiop. There we go. I know he's a movie uh, screenwriter and director and producer, I believe. And this is about... Uh, I mean, Pentagon bioterror operative Robert Diaz is sent to investigate a highly suspected, suspected biochemical attack. You find something far worse. Highly mutative organism capable of extinction level destruction. He contained it and buried it in a cold storage beneath a little used military repository. Now, nah, after decades of festering in a forgotten sub basement, the specimen has found its way out. It's on a lethal feeding frenzy. It's just what we need to read during a global pandemic, of course. But I you know I've actually have seen reviews and they're positive about this book, so it's interesting that one book at least that I've heard of is actually in my box. Right, next up. Democracy Hacked, Political Turmoil and Information Warfare in the Digital Age. Looks interesting. What have we got? 
Space of one election cycle, election cycles, authoritarian governments, money deletes, and fringe hackers figured out how to game elections, bypass democratic processes, turn social networks into the new battlefield. Okay, probably a little bit alarmist, but um, interesting more than less. Looks interesting, like I said. Oh, oops, that's one on the floor, sorry. Uh, and we have some packing paper. Not sure it was actually necessary because the books are packed in so tight. And next up, Jonathan Franzen. Now I've heard of him, he's a big selling author, lots of deep and meaningful stuff, and this is a Oprah Book Club's selection. So it is Freedom by Jonathan Franzen. No idea what this is about. Uh, freedom comically and tragically captures the temptations and burdens of liberties, the thrills of teenage lust, the shaking compromises of middle age, the wages of suburban sprawl, the heavyweight of empire. Okay, it's about two people as they struggle through life in an ever more confusing world. Okay, not sure if I'll ever get around to reading it, but there we go. Oh, look, Irvine Walsh, an author I've heard of. What's this one called? Marabou Stork Nightmares. Looks great. Um, let me see. About somebody on a quest in surrealist South Africa. Its mission to eradicate an evil predator scavenger bird, the marabou stork, before it drives away the peace-loving flamingo from the picturesque Lake Torto. Behind this world lies another, the world of Roy's bizarre family, Scottish housing scheme, and so on. Mm, not sure about that. Erwin Welsh is a, is a popular writer and he's got a, a good reputation, so I've never actually heard of this one before, so maybe one of his lesser known, lesser well reviewed novels. There we go. Silence. Now I've heard of this one, Shusaku Endo. This was a movie, I think I actually recorded it off TV once and never actually got around to watching it. So this is about a Jesuit priest in 1640. Set sail toward Japan, determined to help the brutally oppressed Christians there. Um, there we go. Christianity in uh, 17th century Japan, I think it was officially suppressed. Um, so there we go. We, I'm sure it's deep and meaningful. What else have we got here? Smokey the Brave, the world's smallest dog, the world's biggest heart. Okay. Okay, about a dog that uh, a soldier meets and adopts into his unit, basically. Life, incredible life-affirming story. And I think it's supposedly a true story. It looks like non-fiction in his photographs of the dog in question. So there we go. War, war history with a dog as the lead protagonist. Who knows, may or may not be interesting. Okay. Reach the bottom of the box. Uh, here we go. Sarah Redoubt's Le Chateau. What really happened at the Chateau? When Charlotte regains consciousness after an accident, she finds herself living a stranger's life. The previous five years are a blank, and her husband Henry and daughter Ada are strangers. Arriving at their family chateau in southern France, she hopes to regain her memories. Instead, she feels isolated and unsettled. Strange events hint at underlying darkness. Charlotte doesn't know who to trust. Not really my kind of thing, but who knows. And, oops, there's another one on the floor. It's getting a bit messy in here. Okay, where did you get this number? Here we go. Anthony Salvanto. Something about opinion polls. Uh, opinion poll expert tells you what all the numbers mean and how uh, samples and everything works. Mm, may read it, may not. Okay, and here we go. On Swift Horses by Shannon Poufal. Looks like a uh, romance saga, something involving horse racing and all that sort of thing. So, set in Nevada or something. Okay, probably won't read it, but who knows. Here we go, The Dirty Diet, from the best-selling author of the 5-2 series, Kate Harrison. Lose up to 14 pounds in 28 days. Here's what I really need in life, a diet book. Um, some people probably think I do, but uh, lots of food photographs, of course. That's what you need in a diet book. And 
recipes and bullet points and diagrams and telling you what to do with your life basically not really my type of thing okay cocaine confidential true stories behind the world's most notorious narcotic by Wensley Clarkson okay these basically sounds like a bunch of disparate stories about people who met their sticky end dealing in cocaine or becoming addicted to cocaine um, dealers who sell to celebrities, politicians and royalty alike in the Mexican cartels, machine gunning anyone foolish enough to get into their way. Uh, this type of thing can be interesting, I believe. Um, I read a few like this, mainly about organised crime and what have you. So, who knows, it's a possibility. Okay, we're getting to the lower levels of the book. Okay, the little colouring... Little book of colouring into the deep. Peace in your pocket. So it's one of those adult colouring books. It's a small format one. And it's lots of things from beneath the sea. Whales, jellyfish, and all the other things which I can't quite make out. I think it's a whale with a boat, um, a turtle, and a sailing ship. How nice. I don't think I'll be colouring anything anytime soon. Oh, looks like this one from Primo Levi himself, a tranquil star. First new fiction of Primo Levi to appear in English for a generation. 18 stories that reveal far nuanced, more nuanced writer largely departing from Holocaust works, which he has renowned. These highly lyrical, haunting stories from one of the most remarkable men, Italo Cavani, called one of the most important and gifted writers of our time. So short stories, might read it, might be dipping in and out of it type of thing. Okay, dealing with China, the insider amassed a new economic superpower. Who's this by Henry Paulson Jr., former U.S. Treasury Secretary. Okay, answers, answers the questions you really want to know. How did China become an economic superpower so quickly? How does business really get done there? What are the best ways for Western business and political leaders to work with and compete and benefit from China? How can the US negotiate and influence China giving its authoritarian rule, its massive environmental concerns and huge populations, unremitting demands for economic growth and security? Okay, basically some old public servant talks stories about China and Harry thinks we should deal with it. So, could dip into it one day, but not right away. Here, Strange Bodies, a novel by Marcel Theroux. What's this one about? An ambitious and wholly original, original novel of deception and psychosis by the author of the National Book Award winning finalist Far North. Okay. Some guy is locked up in a, a mental hospital and tells everyone he is actually Dr. Nicholas Slocan and has an elaborate backstory. Is it true? Or is he just a fantasist? Okay. Okay, here we go. Gil Sims, why mummy doesn't give a expletive crossed out with black ink? Um, okay, it seems to be a memoir of bringing up children by a mother and... Looks like it's in a diary format. Each chapter is a month, in a year. I don't know, this type of thing can be entertaining in, in, in reasonable doses. I probably wouldn't get round to reading it right away, though. And now we're down to the last couple. Land of the Downlit Mountains. Okay. A journey across an arid child Pradesh, India's forgotten frontier. Another travel book could be good. Um... Mountain state clinging to the far northeastern corner of India, Arunal Chal Pradesh, meaning land of the downlit mountains, has remained uniquely isolated. Steeped in mist and mystery, not since the pith helmet to the explorers went in search of fable falls of the Brahma Patrua, has an outsider dare transverse it. Okay, travelling from the jungles to the Himalayas, the author sets out to chronicle this forgotten corner of Asia. On the way to meet shamans, hunters, llamas, and attends ritualistic tribal gatherings, relates little-known stories from the Second World War, discovers a world and a way of living which is on the cusp of vanishing forever. They say that in every second travel book, don't they? 
And last but not least, it's one of those parody Famous Five books, Five Forget Mother's Day. Uh, these are a bit of a thing a few years back when they also did those uh, Ladybird pastiche books as well. Um, not sure who actually writes all this. Text by Bruno Vincent, okay. Enid Blyton for Grown Ups, published by Quirkus. So, who would actually want to read all the way through that? Maybe it's entertaining, maybe it's funny. Uh, who knows? I'm not sure I'll find out anytime soon. So, there we go, more packing. So, that was the mystery box. A few hits, a lot of misses. Um, here's the box, just in case you were missing it. Um, so, now, um, so like I said, that's it. The book grocer. Um, wish there were more science or technology technology books in that uh, selection, but I guess it's a mystery box, and you have to put up with whatever you get. And I'm not unhappy about it. There's a lot of interesting looking stuff there. I mean, if I, I mean, I've already got a thousand books which I probably should be reading, and this has just added thirty more. But in the end, um, it's nice to see books. It's nice to see have whole books in your hand and just to know that they are out there there are people that have written their hearts content into the, some of these books that are next to me now falling onto the floor and um, most are worth a read um, you just got to get yourself into the right frame of mind and relax enough and that's something I'm finding hard to do at the moment um, so in other news I read about up to almost up halfway through Ancestral Night so I may get that finished maybe next weekend I'm enjoying it a lot. It's very straightforward uh, compared to other space operas that I've read lately. Um, and the story is moving along. You know, it's just um, just good, just fun. I, I lost myself in it yesterday and enjoyed it. So, so that's the end of the Mystery Box video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as me. I, uh, now I've got to pick the books up and stuff them back in the box and find somewhere to put the box in the books. Uh, but I'll leave that to me. Uh, well, uh, we'll see you next time and um, have a good week, have a good weekend whenever you're watching this and we'll see you next.